What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the garage, and I have my phone precariously perched up here. In fact, let me do this, because I think I left my uh, phone holder in the Cadillac. But today, live from the garage, we are going to be opening up and testing out my new Bench Force. Uh, bench programming tool. These things are about 350 bucks, which is a bit pricey for the base kit. And then the harnesses are going to run you anywhere from 90 to maybe 200 bucks, depending on what you're doing. But what I have here is an E90, one of the new E90 ECMs. You can see it's been unlocked. We're going to try and connect this thing up live on TV. I'm going to grab a beer if you guys don't mind. It's the weekend. Let me uh, break out one of my sweet ABT koozies and grab a beer out of the fridge and then we'll get after it. And I thought this would be a little fun video to do live and we'll dive into what this thing. I've got the E90, E99 harness, all that fun jazz. But whenever you buy the starter kit, it comes with a nice case pop that open <clears throat> you guys ready for the reveal Whoa. okay this is the main brain module it's not even necessarily a brain module but it's got power and ignition modes you've got uh, a switch here where you can go ignition or ignition with a cam bus resistor on there uh, we shouldn't need a resistor because we're talking to an ECM underneath where we have our other goodies we've got our E90 harness, and then that plugs into the adapter harness that goes into the bench force unit. And then we've got power cables, and they've got alligator clips on them to go over to a battery. But we're just going to hook this thing in to our power supply over here. Oh, I should probably crack this beer open, huh? Yeah, you guys can't really see. Let me see if I can. That's about as good as we're going to get it. My phone may take a dive in the middle of this. If it does, I apologize. Oh no, what's the easiest way to do this? Tell you what, I've got an idea. I've got one speaker terminal here. Let me see if I can find another one. Rummage through the junk drawers. Well, heck, didn't plan this out very well, did I? Where there's a will, there's a way. How's everybody doing this weekend? Everybody having a good weekend so far? Tell you what, we can do it this way. I'll rob my terminals here off my bus analyzer. And I'll just twist them in real quick. We got 12.6 volts, should be perfect. Come on, stay in there. And we will open up our bag here, unravel everything, and I'll have to figure out a permanent way of doing this. Uses a barrel connector. I don't know why they just don't send you a power supply. You know, nowadays power supplies are cheap enough that you can just have an AC to DC power supply, but this is a hefty built unit. It's made out of aluminum. And it has an OBD2 port on the front. Rest of the track day went great. We, we, uh, I've got a video that I'll be putting out here in the next couple days. You stupid wire. I got a video that we'll be putting out here in the next couple days showing kind of the results, but we ended up hitting a nine flat with a 130, 60 foot. So our goal was to get into the eights with a 60 in the 20s, 120s. 
Uh, but we started having issues with the batteries not staying up. Stator was probably messed up, and so we never got we never got to do a pull uh, with the nitrous. So we've got our adapter dongle here. We're going to go ahead, plug it in, lock it down, and we will hook it into the back of our bench force here. Hope that I don't start a fire inadvertently. And then our MPVI2, we will plug into the other side of the bench force. And let me grab my uh, tuning laptop. Uh, hopefully everybody's having a good weekend so far. I'm getting ready to go repair the grill. That is my work for today. And we're just going to open up the scanner and see if we can hook up with the scanner for now. But let's go ahead. We'll put power to it. Okay, we got power. Our uh, ignition light is lit up. And now we're going to turn on the, our, our battery light is lit up. Now we're going to turn on the ignition. I'm trying not to move this thing around too much. Okay, now we've got ignition power to the ECM, and we should be able to connect. I got super glue on my finger earlier, so it's not wanting to move the mouse around a little bit. But here we go. Here goes nothing. Let's see if we can read an E90 through our bench force bench programmer. To me, is the new scanner super slow? Ah, oh, boating, nice. Good weekend for boating. Okay, that's free pull for uh, supported parameters. And let's go online. And it shows us we're on a 2019 Chevy Silverado 1500 5.3. So this, there we go. We're getting values in. It works. I'll be going to heck. Now, the reason I did this, I've got this E90 uh, to do some testing with, and I have gone through the documentation top to bottom. You know, gone through all the documentation, all the pinouts, stuff like this. First, it's hard to identify where you need power and where you need ground on these. Obviously on this one you only need power and ground on the blue connector. We know that now. There's power and ground throughout all three connectors except for maybe the gray connector. I don't know that it has any power or ground because the gray connector uh, is auxiliary systems a lot of the time. Now the other side of it that's really interesting about this in particular ECM is that uh, it doesn't have any, it has three high-speed channels on it. None of them are listed as being OBD2. Now, they're just listed as being GM high-speed. Obviously, one of them is probably an OBD2. If we were to go in here and uh, look at the details, we are on CAN for an E90, so it is a CAN connection. But none of them say, hey, this is a CAN connection. This is the connection that you're wanting to use. Uh, so, if you go in and look at all the communication diagrams, you have what is called the DLC, the data link connector. That is the OBD2 port underneath your, underneath your dash. If you go through all the old stuff and look at it, uh, you know, like on my 2015, you can trace the wires from the data link connector, your OBD2 port, to every single module that's hooked up to it, BCM, uh, ECM. All that stuff. Now, on the newer vehicles, this is going to be the 2019s and beyond, the new Corvette, the new Silverados, all this stuff. That does not uh, show that connection going back to the port. In fact, it shows that the port only connects to, they have a gateway router now. So there is a module on there that handles uh, data communication through all the different modules and the OBD2 port talks to that first. Now the question was whether or not it just passed on OBD2 information or if there was you know, some way of accessing these ECMs on the bench. We had a pretty good idea that it was available, we just didn't necessarily know how. Bench Force had already developed out this harness. That's the only reason I bought it. It's, it's nice to have now because if I need a harness for a different vehicle, say an E38, they're like 90 bucks, and you've got a nice plug-and-play assembly, 
where you can do a bench programming on any ECM or TCM. They support about everything out there. Literally, their website's benchforce.com. Uh, Go check them out. I'm not plugging them by any means. I haven't had enough time to play with them. But compared to this, this is my bench programmer. I did a video on it a while back. This is my bench programmer. This is a little bit sketchy. A little bit sketchy compared to having this device that has saw you know has clipped in connections everything's good you're not going to have to worry about a wire pulling loose during a write things like that it's a clean package uh so not for everybody definitely not going to be for everybody this is going to be just for the guys that are doing a lot of uh programming on the bench or experimentation like i do i don't even necessarily uh do a lot of bench programming uh but I do a lot of experimentation, and there's some experiments that I'm going to be running on this ECM. And I'll try and share some of that data because I know some of you guys enjoy me going in and doing things like hand bus sniffing and stuff like that. Uh, the cost on the bench force, the base unit, I bought the starter kit that came with the base unit, the case, and all that stuff was $350. So it's not cheap. It's not for the faint of heart. But as I said, it's, it's more geared for people that are using it day in, day out, doing kind of bench stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I'm going to get back to, re you know, repairing the grill because it's about time to cook some burgers out. I just wanted to jump on, do a quick video. I didn't feel like this necessarily warranted an edited video. I thought it'd be cool to do a, a live one so we could enjoy a beer on this Sunday together uh, and as I update you about on the track. Now, the other update, I've got the Super Auto back in the garage waiting on a gasket set because the o-ring was leaking on the main housing of the pro charger those things only hold four ounces of oil so you don't really want to leak any of that out because there's not much to spare that'll be in tuesday or wednesday i posted the first video on math idle uh, tuning i've got another video i'll be putting out in the next day or two that is uh just low speed driving on it where we run into some issues go into lip mode troubleshoot those issues repair them and continue tuning through those so we'll see some cool stuff but that being said, I'm going to get back to it. You guys have a great day. Have a great weekend. Thanks for stopping by the garage. You know the drill. ABT, always be tuning.